This is Sparta. Now, that's what I feel like. You guys never seen 300? Okay, good. That's what it felt like. I felt like I was walking into 300, walking into battle. Leonidas, that's my name today, Leonidas. No. Uh, I'm Pastor Kevin, and it is always a privilege to be here at Atmosphere. Um, Pastor Jim um, is out. Obviously, I'm not Pastor Jim, uh, which is amazing. Uh, oh, what's up, bro? You back. What's up? Yeah. Uh, and so it's always a pleasure to be here. Uh, it feels really good to be, uh, what Heidi says is an atmosphere favorite. I don't know about that, but it feels good for her to say that. She probably says that to everyone, about everybody that comes here. So I'm just going to take it for what it is, and I'm going to say that I am. Uh, but, hey, and uh, I'm from a little bit about me, she asked to share, because some of you might not know me. Uh, born and raised in Kansas City, Missouri. I'm very proud of that. I've been in L.A. for 20 years now. Uh, I have uh, four children. They're right here, right there. And then my wife, B.B., right there. And then I have uh, special people here. Uh, my sister, my older sister, her husband, Chris, and my nephew, Nicholas. They're all sitting right here. So they came down from... Kansas City, they've been at Disneyland and California Adventure uh, the past two days, so they probably will fall asleep right now. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's a little bit about me. I, I run a nonprofit organization, a Game Breakers Academy. We serve young people. Uh, we help them educationally, spiritually, and athletically. And then, as I mentioned, I'm the chaplain for the Los Angeles Rams. So uh, that's a little bit about me. Uh, but it's not about me. It's about it's about God today. And as I've been I've been here all, all morning and it's been a it's been a privilege and it's always a blessing to be able to share God's word. But what I do know and what I realize what I'm realizing even more so is that, man, there are things that's going on inside of this building and inside of our world that it, it's 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 attacks from the enemy. You know, you have disease, you have generational curses, you have uh, addictions, you have marital problems, you have financial issues. And, and so I know that there are issues in the building, but the, the question is, when stuff happens, what do you use? What, who do you run to? Where do you go? And what I do know is that oftentimes we don't run to, to God. And let's just be honest. We're sitting here in these chairs. Uh, we're, we come to church on Sundays. But, but truly, what happens when things actually start happening in our lives that are, are against, you know, things don't start going, things aren't going well. What do we do? And today, as we continue this series of Kings and Kingdoms, uh, we're going to learn uh, what King Jehoshaphat did when the enemy was at his doorstep. It wasn't. Um, we're going to learn how to use our our spiritual weapons to fight earthly battles. OK, we're going to we're going to learn not to fight earthly things with earthly weapons. Because God has given us some, some tools and some weapons that we can use, that we can apply right now in our lives. I mean, we can walk out of here right now and we can apply them to our lives and we can see change right away. You can do it. So here, let me, okay, so here we go. All right, I got to do this every time. Uh, every service man, is like a clap here, four claps here, four claps over there. Hey, if y'all going to clap, let's clap right. So let's everybody clap together. So you, yeah, right, okay. So I see we got some, I, I see. So it's it just, it's not about clapping for me. It's about not leaving your friends hanging. So clap, <laughs> clap the right way, all right? Clap together, together, together. We're going to learn about unity and what that does. Uh, but, but King Jehoshaphat, uh, he's a great example of using spiritual weapons to fight things that are happening on the earth. And Jehoshaphat, he was the fourth king of Judah. He's the son of Asa. I know you, we talked about Saul, David, and Asa. And Asa, uh, or Jehoshaphat, is the son of, of, uh, of Asa. 
And so I didn't really know that that was the order that was happening, but they probably did that because they knew I was talking about King Jehoshaphat. So they probably did that. Jim is like that. He's He's, he's like that. But he's the fourth king of Judah. He's amazing. And the thing that I love most about King Jehoshaphat is not that he was a, a perfect king, but he was a king that actually loved God and desired God above himself. He desired God for his people, not just for himself. He wanted to give them access to the throne of God, not just for himself. And I think that's a uh, Pivotal for a leader, for a king, for a queen to make sure that the people around them are improving and getting better. And in this case, that the people that we are, are, are responsible for, the people that we love are drawing closer to God and not further away from God. And so King Jehoshaphat was a man that held fast to the Lord and did not cease to follow him. That's what Second King Kings tells us about him. Second Chronicles tells us that he walked in the ways of his father Asa and did not stray from them. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. Second Corinthians 19 uh, verse three tells us even after he made a, a mistake, it said there, however, is still some good in you. How many of you guys know that God is still some good in you, regardless of where you come from, what you're going through right now? There's God still sees some good in you. There's some good in all of us. And, and for you have you have rid the land of Asherah Pose and have set your heart on seeking God. And I want us to have our hearts set on seeking God today. Are you guys tracking with me? Yeah. This is 1130 service. You guys should not be asleep. <laughs> so let's wake up. Let's smell the coffee or whatever y'all say, whatever the thing is. And so we're, we're here, and my comments will be coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 20, right? And if you want to, you can learn about, about uh, uh, Jehoshaphat, 1 Kings. You can learn about him. You can read his story in 2 Chronicles. I believe it's uh, 17 through 20, uh, 21 maybe, and you can just learn about King Jehoshaphat. But I'm going to focus right here on, on, on chapter 20 because I know that there are some enemies at our doorstep today. And I know that there's just stuff just happening in our lives. And we have to deploy our spiritual weapons in these earthly battles. So point number one is we need to seek and desire God. Let me let me read verse one for us. And I was trying to be cute because they got these, uh, what do they call them? Safety monitors. So you can look up there, but then I'd just rather read the Bible. Uh, read from the, that is the Bible, but I'm going to read from the book, Okay. All right, so pardon me, my eyes are down, and I'm going to come up, and I'm going to look at you, okay? All right, I want to tell you what I'm doing so you won't be thinking I'm weird. All right, verse 1, <laughs> after this, the Moabites and the Ammonites with some of the Menunites came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. So right now what's happening is that there are some enemies that are at the doorstep of Judah. So they're not just leaving their hometown, they're actually at the, at the border, they're at the line and they're ready to attack. And so th th there's, there's three people. One of my, one of my favorite, one of my favorite movies is Rocky Four. I used to watch it over my granddaddy's house all the time. Uh, my, my kids call it Rocky IV. Remember Rocky versus Drago? I must break you. But there was this scene after Apollo Creed gets, gets murdered in the ring. He thought it was an exhibition battle. Drago was like, nah, this is for real. So he knocks him out, kills him cold, bam, bam, bam. You know, Rocky, he goes in his Lamborghini and he starts traveling around wherever he was. I don't know if he was in Philly or L.A. I can't remember which city he was in. But he was driving around and then he comes and, and Adrian knew that Rocky had to retaliate. He, there was going to be a fight. She came in and he's coming in. He's walking up the stairs and she meets him at the top of the stairs and they're having a conversation. I'm going to have to fight. You know how he talks. I'm going to... And then Adrian, as a wife, she's like, dude, are you crazy? Did you just see what he did to Apollo? And she was like, you can't win. <laughs> like, that's one of my favorite scenes. Of it. You can't win. Right. And sometimes we got some battles going on in our life. The enemy is at our doorstep. And really, frankly, we cannot win on our own. We can't win by ourselves. And so the enemies, it was three, it was three on one. That's called a jump. Yeah, in the hood, that you get, or they say you're getting packed out. That's what they say in the hood. You get you got packed out. But we just say you got jumped. 
And so, and so these, these three, these three superpowers were coming together to wage war against Jehoshaphat and, and Judah. And it says in verse two, some people came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the Dead Sea. And it's already, and, and, and it's already in Hazan, Tamar, that is in Gedi. Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord and proclaim a fast for all Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. And so you see, when the enemy is at your doorstep, Jehoshaphat does the right thing. And he chose to inquire of the Lord and required a fast. And so we need to seek and desire the Lord first before anything else. Prayer should be our first response, not our last resort. For some of us, prayer is an afterthought. And I want to encourage us when the enemy, and just not when the enemy is there, but prayer should be the thing that we do first. It's the first thing that we do when there is a problem. I think therapists are great. I go see one all the time. I think reading books are great. I have a library full of books. But there's nothing like when you connect with the father who is in control of all things. That has the answers to every question. God should be the first person that we talk to. From the big things to the small things. And so prayer should be our first response and not our last resort. I love this about Jehoshaphat that he chose prayer over pride because his papa, his daddy, Asa, he started falling in love with the soldiers and the power. As a king, as a queen, as somebody that's in charge, man, it is so hard to ask for help when you need it. We don't want to show our insecurities and our weaknesses that we may have. And so instead, I, instead of leading with his insecurities, his fear, he said, I'm going to inquire of the Lord. I'm going I'm to turn my face to God. And we need to learn to start turning our face to God. I also learned in these first three verses is that, that there's power and there's strength in numbers. You see, Jehoshaphat didn't just call uh, uh, his, 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 his friends. He called all of Judah. He said, in verse 13, it said he called the men were there, their wives, their children, and all the little ones. And so there was strength in the numbers when they began to pray. And, and, and what I also love about him, I, I find Jehoshaphat to not just be a king, but a spiritual leader. It wasn't just about transactions. It was about transformation because, again, he wanted to teach the people, when I am gone, guess where you need to go for your help? You need to go to God for help. Amen. Not don't, don't look to me. For the answer, now, I, I might be able to talk to God and I might be able to give you some instructions, but at the end of the day, I need you to turn to God. And so when he included all the people, I thought that was so cool because how many of us as parents don't like to include our children in what's going on? Man, I know there are so many parents that, that have just uh, uh, allowed their, their, their children to, to wonder, like, oh, I didn't tell my children I was sick because I didn't want them to worry. Or I didn't tell them about our financial hardship because I didn't want them to worry. But what we see right here with King Jehoshaphat, he called all of the people to pray and he called them to fast. And, and, and what it did, instead of instilling fear, it, 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 pro it promoted power. Amongst the people, it developed, it built trust and a knowing. Man, you, I want to know if somebody's about to come and hit me in the back of my head. 
I want to know if there's an enemy at my doorstep. My buddy told me, he said, man, you know you have an enemy when they don't tell you when you got when, when, there, when there's somebody about to come, come and attack you. And so what Jehoshaphat does, he shows a humility, he shows a vulnerability, and he shows transparency that led to unity, and unity manifests the power of God. Okay, stop. Hold on, stop. Nope, nope, that don't even count. That don't even count. We're going to start again. We, you, I'm going to say that again, and then you're going to start clapping, and then everybody else is going to start clapping. I said, unity manifest the power of God. There it is. There you go. And we and we we seen this throughout the entire scripture when the people of God comes together, guess what happens? God shows up. Acts 2, the day of Pentecost. Y'all remember that? It said they were they were in the they were in the upper room. They were all together. It said, but when they were all together in one room praying, it said the, the the there was like this rushing wind that fell, and there was like these tongues of fire that rested on their heads, and it was like it was it was fire. And then it, then and then they said they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they started speaking in tongues, and then, and then they went out. And then that's when they were able to go out and fulfill what they were supposed to do. Be my witness. But it wasn't until they were all in the same room together. Unity manifests the power of God. You, you guys are, are living examples of that right now. I, I, I said, every, I told every, every other service that do not get bougie because you guys are in this nice building. Because <laughs> I know where y'all, I know where atmosphere started. I was there since the beginning. But I guarantee you, Pastor Jim was like, hey, this is what we do. I got a vision from God. We're going to pray. We're going to get out of that. We're going to get out of that. We're going to grow out of the, the, the golf course. Then we're going we're gonna to get into this building, and we're going to pray that God would allow us to have a place of our own that we can call our own. So let's start praying and let's start fasting. Is that the truth? Is, that, is it the truth? But you guys were praying together in, in unity, and look at where you, look, look at where atmosphere is today. It's the power of God. That's just, a, that's just a small thing. Think about what that looks like when there's issues going on in your family. Think about what that looks like when there's issues in your marriage or with your children. I think, I, I, man, there are some things that me and my wife don't do well, but there's, this is a couple of things that we do well in our home. We, we include our children in what's going on in our lives. So if somebody is sick, hey, we tell them, hey, we need you to pray for so, such and such. Hey, we need, we, need, we need you to understand, hey, this is what's happening with the money. This is what's going on. This is, what, this is our goal. We're trying to go here. We're trying to do this. We include them in that. We include them. We, again, like some of you might, might think that I'm crazy, but most of the time when we get together at, at night, we, my wife and I, we don't pray. Bibi and I, we don't pray. We, we have our children pray. And you should hear them. They're, they're, they're bringing up, I'm like, dang, I forgot about this person was sick. And they remembered, oh, we're praying for this person, this person. And, 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 and guess what they get to do? They get to learn. Don't count on daddy. Don't count on mama because I'm not going to be here. We're not going to be here all, all the time. We need you to know where your, sort, where your help comes from. And your help comes from God. <laughs> and, then, and then another cool thing that we did, and again, I, I'm, we're not listening. I ain't gonna tell all the stories that I was telling early because they're here right now. So I'm gonna just I'm gonna just keep it. I'm gonna, I don't want to have no fights when I get out of here. You know I don't want, I don't want that. But but here's the deal. I know th- if you guys have teenagers and preteens and you know that that's a pretty crazy age, just to say the least. Probably want to pull your hair out, all of those things, wring some necks, everything. And so so the truth of the matter is we we were having some issues with our children. And we and, and and it was like, man, I'm 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 about to go off the top rope on somebody. <laughs> Y'all know WWE, all of that, boom, that whole thing. And my one of my mentors, he was like, Kevin, have you considered fasting for your children? I mean, I pray for them all the time. We pray. No, have you and BB considered fasting for your children? Nah. Hey, babe, we're going we're to start fasting for our children. We're going to start praying specifically and asking God specifically in these areas that we need our children to be better in. 
every Thursday or it started on Thursday, but then we moved it to Wednesdays and we started praying and fasting every Wednesday. When she get home from work, we would go and we would walk around and we would start praying for our children. We would start asking God, what, what, what do we do? What do we say? How do we love them? How do we serve them? And we started seeing a change in our children. Now, they're not perfect by any stretch of the imagine, imagination. They're not perfect, but we did start seeing a change and a transformation in their life. And we even included some other people to, to do that with us. And so, again, God, we need to bring people together to pray. Are you guys tracking what I'm saying? There's strength, there's strength in numbers. And, 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 and prayer also aligns heaven with earth. That's so cool to know that we have act, that we can bring heaven right here to earth right now. Did y'all know that? When God created us, God gave us dominion, meaning authority over here, over this place. Oh, we, we have dominion. So whatever we do, it's on us. But when we pray, as the disciples asked Jesus, so teach us, teach us how to pray. And he said, when you pray, you pray like this, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, your kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So guess what? We get to call heaven to earth when we pray. We get to attach our hearts with God's heart, and we get to allow and release God to, to do miracles here on this earth. And so when we pray, so we should seek. We, we have to seek and desire God through prayer and fasting. If you don't have a practice of, of fasting, you need to, to implement that. And I'm not just talking about intermittent fasting for your beach body. <laughs> yeah, I know y'all laughing right now, but I know y'all do it. Yeah. It's the summertime. You trying to walk around the beach and you trying to be sexy. <laughs> I want you to be holy. Yeah, are you guys tracking with me? Yes. And so we, that needs to be a practice of ours. Giving up something. Turning it over to God and allowing God uh, uh, to work in us. And so let's align heaven and earth in our prayers. The second thing that I learned from King Jehoshaphat is that we need to have faith over fear. Faith over fear. Now, I know you guys have probably heard a message about that. Some of you probably got t-shirts, faith, line, fear. Some of you probably got it tattooed on you. All of that's probably one of your favorite sayings, but do you actually live it? Is your faith greater than your fear? When God asks you to do something, do you do it? If there is a dream that you have, are you chasing it? If there is a vision that God has given to you, do you run after it? Is your faith greater than your fear? You see, because God asked Jehosh Jehoshaphat to do some crazy stuff. There's a vast army coming. And here, this is, what, this is what it says in verse 15 through 17. It said, he said, uh, listen, King Jehoshaphat. And this is the prophet speaking, but the prophet is a mouthpiece of God. So God said this. Listen, King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. I need everybody to say that really quick with me. The battle is not mine. The battle is not mine. It's God. One more time. The battle is not mine. It's God's. Tomorrow, march down against them. They will be climbing up by the pass of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Zeriel. You will not have to fight this battle, but you got to take up your position, stand firm, and see the deliverance the Lord will give you, Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. Amen. I don't 
don't think y'all be understanding what the scripture be saying to y'all, saying to me. If that does not encourage you that there is an army, there are enemies that are on the attack, they are at your doorstep, and God tells you to don't be afraid, don't be discouraged, you don't have to fight, just take your position. Stand firm now, don't move, and watch what I do. Watch what I do. And so, so, so we know, we, we know if, you, if you've ever read the Bible, you know uh, Hebrews 11, 12, 1, all of that. You, we, we know those things, what faith is. But do we know that faith, according to the scripture here in verse 20, it says that faith upholds us. We know that faith, without faith, is impossible to please God. Did you know that when he said the shield of faith, have you, did you know that that's an offensive and defensive weapon, the shield of faith? Because if you lose your sword, you, get to, you can strike with some, you can strike them. I learned that from Leonidas on 300. You can strike, you can protect, you can do all of that. So our faith is both offensively, it's offensive and defensive. And so we need, to, we, need to, we need to be offensive in our faith right now. And, and, and we need to start running towards the roar. Run towards it. I was doing some research about lions. I, I mean, I do, I do like lions. I'm not like a National Geographic guy. I'm not that guy, but... but for the sake of this point, I heard this concept before, so I had to start looking it up. And I was like, why, why would I run towards the roar of a lion? You know, like that doesn't make any sense to me. And so, but what I understood and what I found was that, that uh, lions don't do, the, the male lion does not do uh, the majority of the, the hunting. They really do very little of the hunting. It's the lioness, it's, it's Nala and those girls. They do all of the stuff like that. They do, they do the hunting uh, Mufasa just kind of, kind of, kind of chills. He just, he just hangs. But what he does do is as the antelope and the gazelles and all these little zebras and all the little other things and the little, the little animals that they feast on the prey, as they're in their little watering hole or they're grazing, the male lion gets himself right across the way, he crouches down in his position while the ladies, they go, the lioness, they just kind of position themselves strategically right behind them. And then the, 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 the male lion, he raises up, flashes his mane, and gives this, this loud roar that it said anybody within 50 mile radius, it'll shake their soul. And so as he, as he roars, what do you think these little, the prey do? do? They run a, away from the roar into the trap. And so what I'm encouraging us to do is start running towards the, running towards the enemy, not like walking into sin. I do not think that I'm saying go run into sin and, and start doing all this crazy stuff. I'm saying if you got a fear, you got an enemy that's at your doorstep, you got divorce knocking on your door, you better go and run to Jesus and you need to go and find some help. If you sit and you know that you sit, you need to go to the doctor and you need to ask them to, for help. If your sons and your daughters are, are acting up and acting out, you need to go to God and you need to go and ask for some help. If you got financial issues, you need to set a budget and you need to find some help. If you're having thoughts of suicide and thoughts of hurting yourself, you need to go to God and you need to get some help. We need to start running towards the roar and not run towards the, run towards the actual and, and fall into the trap. Because the word says that the enemy is roaming around like a lion looking for something to devour. Like a lion, not a lion, but like a lion. So the truth of the matter is the lion has no teeth. The lion has no teeth. Go ahead and clap if you're going to clap and don't leave her hanging. And so we need to be people that run towards the roar. We need to run towards the fear, the vision, the, the, the dreams, because it's not always bad things that, we, that we're running to or running from. We might be afraid of failure. 
But as, Co as Coach Sean says, we, we don't fear failure. We attack success, and we want to attack success in this building. We don't fear failure. Because we, we got a guy that, that said they gonna fight, he's gonna, he gonna fight for us. I'm gonna tell this story. I ain't tell nobody. Uh I haven't said I didn't tell this story real quick. Uh, uh so I, I I got a brother, he's a bad dude. And when I was a kid, I, I played football all the time, uh Village Green, and uh and and uh I would play in it and and I hate when I get caught up in drama. You know, my brother had a girlfriend and this dude, like, it's all kind of crazy. So we playing football. And this dude, he five years older than me. He is tackling me hard, slamming me on the ground. I'm just like, what is going on? So I go home like a little brother. I say, girl, I mean, bro was doing this. He said, what? He was doing what? He was doing what? He called him on the phone. And I ain't never seen uh, a person get beat up that bad in my life. And it made me feel good to know that I got somebody that's going to fight for me. My big bro, he had my back. And I want to tell you, God ain't, is not big bro. God is God. And God is going to fight for you. God is going to fight for me. And so it's, a, it's something special to know that you, that you, that you got somebody that's going to fight for you. And that you can, that, that there was some, there were some really cool statements that was made. It said the battle is not yours. Uh, uh, you don't have to fight. Yeah, you might have to fight physically. Yes, you got to do the work, but, but the truth is that God is fighting for you on your behalf. He said, take your position, stand and see. Some of us, we get out of position. Things get a little wanky, we just fall back. Instead of walking towards and, and get to the front of the battle line and just standing there and saying, okay, you said come take my position, be where I'm supposed to be, so I'm going to be where I'm supposed to be. As a husband, I'm going to be where I'm supposed to be. As a father, I'm going to be where I'm supposed to be. As a brother, I'm going to be where I'm supposed to be. As a son, I'm going to be where I'm supposed to be. Take your position. Stand firm. Do not, do not draw back. Don't shrink back. God is not pleased with those who shrink back. He said, and watch the deliverance of the Lord. Can you, do you remember when God fought for Moses? Do you remember when God fought for, jo for Joshua? He said, as I was with my servant Moses, I will be with you. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Don't be afraid. And so you need... We need to walk around with that confident, knowing that if I'm taking my position, if I'm where I'm supposed to be, if I'm standing firm, my feet are, my, 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 my feet are planted, I get to watch God do something crazy in my life. Incredibles. Remember that movie? Remember the Incredibles? Yeah. What are you staring at, kid? Something amazing, I guess. <laughs> right? We get to see God do something amazing in our lives. Amen. Things that we can never think or imagine. Because that's how good our God is. Amen. That's what God desires for you and for me. And so we need to make sure that we're taking our position. You need to know that the Lord is with you. The last thing I learned, well, not the last thing, but the, the, the third thing that I want to share with you that I learned is that praise is what we do. Again, faith over fear. And this was the, one of the strangest things I've ever seen before. It said that as they were going to war, he was afraid. And he said, after consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and praise him for the splendor of his holiness. As they went out at the head of the army saying, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. And it, and it goes on to say, as they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and of Mount Seir who were invading Judah, and they were defeated. The Ammonites, the Moabites, rose up against the men from Mount Seir to destroy and annihilate them. After they had finished slaughtering the men from Seir, they helped to destroy one another. Ain't that crazy? So I believe it was the praise of the men and the gratitude of the men that promoted the victory. And so we got to praise got to go before the warrior. 
You can't, you can't be a, a, a warrior without praise. I mean, I mean you, you can, but I don't think you're going to get the best results. We see this right here. You see it throughout the Bible, the power of praise. And they, 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 they call and appointed men to worship. And so I've been, I've been checking y'all out. I, I mean, and, and, and praise is, is more than just an activity uh, of us singing and doing all of that stuff. And so I, I'm not judging y'all, but I was checking y'all out. I was looking at the men. And as they was out here singing, holy, holy, you know, all those good songs. Y'all dudes is sitting there, holy, holy. Like, God appointed the men to praise God. God appointed me, God appointed you, Papa, to, to praise God. For you to go out before the army. And I firmly believe before we can be warriors, the warrior men, the warrior women that we need to be, that, that, that we need to learn how to praise God with our whole hearts. Amen. Because guess what? When we praise God, guess what it does? It gives us confidence. Man, come on, come on. That's why they, that's why they put praise and worship at the beginning. It ain't just so you can feel good. It's so you can encounter God, so you can prepare your hearts. So you can hear, so you can see, so you can feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. It ain't just so you can come here and have a concert. It's actually a, a, a strategy behind this. God wants you to be ready for war. Are you war ready? So praise has to go before the warrior. And praise should be full of gratitude. Because when we open up our mouths and we say thank you and we get praise to God, guess what it does to God? It, it shows God that the situation that we find ourselves in is not bigger than him. It says that, it, it says that God, I'm trusting you above all else. I'm leaning not on my own understanding, but in all my ways, I'm trusting in you because I know you're going to make my path straight. That's what, that's what you're saying when you say I, 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 I'm thankful. You guys remember the story of the 10 lepers? You know, y'all know that story? 10 lepers. Y'all know what it meant to be a leopard. I hope you do. A leopard, not a leopard, a leper. Skin disease, skin problem, you, away. And there was 10 men, they were like, God, save us. Save us, heal us, heal us, heal us. God being God, Jesus being Jesus, he said, okay, here, you heal, boom. Go, go and do your thing. Go and show the king and then come back. But only one came back. Only one came back. He's like, where's your friends? Are they on doing their own thing? And the thing that I get from that story is that, man, I, my praise better be as loud as it was when he heals me than when I was asking for the healing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't be, no, don't be a person... Don't be a person that praises God or, or, or asking God and on your knees when it's bad. You, you should be shouting from the rooftops because the praise means to magnify and to glorify and make a loud noise. Not just with our mouth, but with our lives, because that's what it's about. Praise is how we live. It is who we are. Praise is what we do. And then we see that praise confuses the enemy. It confuses the enemy. I told y'all about Disneyland. My, my family was at Disneyland. I went there on Friday. It was torture. My knees are still hurting right now. <laughs> it was hot as a mug. It was hot. It was hot. And I asked Bibi, I was like, Bibi, was I complaining? She was like, nah, he wasn't. She was like, the kids was worse than you. I was like, so I was complaining. She was like, nah, 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 you weren't complaining. Man, you was good. You was just taking a whole lot of naps. <laughs> but but, but I, I, was, I was there, and, uh, you know, I, I don't like amusement parks for a couple of reasons. There's too many people there. I don't like standing in line. And then the parking is terrible. Like, you get lost in the parking lots. And so I, 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 I say, take a picture so we can remember where we are. Right? Nobody took a picture. 
I'm trusting my baby girl, Hannah. Hey, Hannah, you remember where we were? She was like, yeah, Donald 1C or Donald 7C or something. She said something. So we, we, we get off the trolley. We start, yeah, Donald 1C. We start walking, confident. Well, I'm telling you, I'm fired up. About to get, I'm about to get home. I'm about to go home. I'm so tired. Donald 1C. Hit the alarm. I don't find my little car. I'm like, my sister, BB, they're like, nah, we was over here. I was like, nah, we was, Hannah said we was here. Where, where's our car? And I started getting upset. I was, I said, BB, I thought I told you to take a picture. Oh, I should have took a picture myself. And I started like, and, but then I, I, I promise you, we started walking and everybody started spanning the, the, the parking lot. And I just started, I just prayed. I, I am not, this is a true story. I walked across the, the pathway and I said, God, please help me find my car. <laughs> I hit the button. <laughs> there she is. And I promise you, I'm not joking. It's because, hey, listen, if that was last year or whatever, I would have been, I would have had a fit. But as soon as I was like, God, you got it, man. Just show me where it's at. Show me what's up. And I want the enemy to be like, man, I can't get him. I can't get him like that no more. Let me find something else. And then once I figure out what the enemy is trying to do, then I'm going to say, God, I'm going to I'm gonna bring you there. I don't want the enemy to be able to get us no more. Let's praise God. Let's pray. Let's praise God. Because when we praise God in the middle of our storm, as the enemy is approaching, it confuses them. It makes them under, like, why are you giving God the glory? And I'm trying to send you through hell. Because I know my God got me. That's how I, that's why I'm praising him. And so praise should be what we do. And so as I wrap up right here, I, I want to conclude with the prayer. And as I mentioned, I didn't know if this, I probably should have just had this part of the, of the passage at the beginning somewhere. But I wanted to leave y'all with this prayer. The actual prayer that Jehoshaphat prayed with the people. That, and I want you to understand that it reminded I think it was reminding Jehoshaphat of who God was and who God is. He was reminding himself what God had done for him. And he was encouraging the people to get their eyes on Jesus, get their eyes on the God who has saved them and delivered them. And here's what I want you to understand is that if God has done it once, God will do it again and again and again because it's a part of his character. God loves us. God will never leave us nor forsake us. God, we are his children. We are, we are special. We are lovely to him. We have been fearfully and wonderfully made. We are more than conquerors. There is nothing, uh, there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Y'all need to know that about the God that we serve. And this is what Jehoshaphat prayed. And he said, Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand and no one can withstand you. Our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? They have lived in it and have built in it a sanctuary for your name, saying, if calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment or plague or, fam or famine, we will stand in the presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress and you will hear us and you will save us. But now here are men from Ammon, Moab and Mount Seir whose territory you will not allow Israel to invade when they came from Egypt. So they turned away from them and did not destroy them. See how they are repaying us by coming to drive us out of the possession you gave us as an inheritance. Get this last verse. Our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. And I ain't got, we ain't got no, I don't have no power over that cancer, man. I don't have no power 
over my husband wanting to leave me and divorce me. I don't have any power over the fact that my children are disobedient. I don't have any power over that. I don't have any power over the fact that my boss just fired me and let me go. But he said this. I lost it. <laughs> what we do not know, we do not know what to do. But our eyes are on you. So what I love about Jehoshaphat and say that fast five times is that he was a man, a leader, a king that wanted his people to see God and experience God in his fullness. And so as you leave this place, as the enemy is crouching at your doorstep, turn to God, inquire of the Lord. And if it requires a fast, do so. If you need to increase, if you need to increase your faith, remember, run towards the roar, run towards the thing that is making you scared. Run. What did it say? It said, take your position. Don't leave. Take your position, stand firm, and you're going to see me do something miraculous and amazing in your life today. And then let's start praising God in the middle of it all. Let, come on, man. Come on. Let, come on. God, we thank you so much. We know that the enemy is on the move. But the enemy has no power. And so I pray that you would create in us a clean heart, that you would create in us prayer warriors, that we would learn how to praise you through the storms when it's good and when it's bad, God. We praise you. Lord, I pray that we will start running towards the vision that you've given us, not be afraid of failure, but, but, but assume success. Assume, assume that the victory is ours because victory belongs to you, Jesus. Lord, I pray that you will cover us. I pray that if there's things in here that is broken, Lord, I pray that you will begin to restore them. Lord, I pray that you will begin to heal our hearts and restore marriages. I pray that you will heal, heal us from these, these ailments, these diseases, these, these, these na this nasty thing, Lord. I pray that you will just protect us from harm. I pray that you will deliver us from the bondage of drugs pornography, lust. Set us free today, God. Forgive us of our sins. Help us to be obedient. Help us to choose obedience over sacrifice. Help us to choose you above all. Forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us and make us whole. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Thank you for tuning in today to another great message from Atmosphere Church. If this message is spoken to your heart, would you take a moment and share it with your friends? You can connect with us on Spotify, iTunes, podcast, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Simply do a search for Atmosphere Church through these various platforms and then click the follow or subscribe button. If you're watching this video on YouTube, you should see it right below this video. It's another great way for us to be able to stay connected with you. If you live in the Southern California area, we would love to invite you to be a part of our family. For more information about our church, go to our official webpage at atmosphere.church. Finally, if this service and our other resources bless you, would you consider giving back to Atmosphere Church to support not only these things, but also support the creation of even more resources for you? To make a donation, simply go to our website and click on the tab that says Give. Your gift of any amount is greatly appreciated. Until next time, we pray that you will keep the faith, spread the hope, and live the love.